Hello and welcome to Pocket Gamer Doppies' News Roundup of the Week. This is for the week ending the 4th of October 2013. It's been a week of um, kind of ups and downs really for the industry. Um, I guess sometimes we get kind of caught into some uh, kind of predictable kind of uh, comment that everything's booming and everything's kind of going well and and in general I guess for most companies it's still seeing quite heavy, quite strong growth but um, within, within those kind of constraints there's still kind of things happening. So um, I guess we'll start off with some, with I guess, some bad news, at least bad news for the people who have been sacked. Um, so two very big companies in the free-to-play mobile space, uh, Kabam and Gree, have both, I guess they would call it, kind of internal reorganisation. So um, Kabam has actually shut down its um, one of its teams, or its studio actually, in Austin, Texas. Um, it shut down a game, kind of um, sacked 23 people. Um, but the broader context for that is Kabam is, is booming in terms of sales, particularly on um, on mobile, and it's kind of started off as a, as a web free-to-play company and has, and has kind of over the last two years exploded in terms of its mobile um, side. So I guess that's a reorganization depending on where you happen to live in America and where Kabam kind of has its offices. Um, and kind of I guess a similar thing, slightly more concerning maybe, Agree, which is one of the big um, Japanese companies. It, it's been um, kind of ha having a difficult year really. Um, and the news is coming out, it's shut down one studio um, and it's offered uh, voluntary redundancy to 200 staff. So that's a, a fairly large percentage of its workforce. Um, and it's kind of what we seem to be seeing in the Japanese market is is slightly later than the rest of the developed world. At least it's going through a transi transition from feature phone games. Obviously, Japanese feature phones were a bit more advanced than the feature phones we had in the West. But now it's heavily going to to um, smartphones, um, iOS and Android, um, and that's kind of shaking things up. Where previously DNA and GRI have kind of sat there in the in the in the feature in the feature phone market. They were the two platforms you played games on. If you wanted to play games in Japan on mobile, you had to basically go through one of those platforms. It's all shaking up a bit now. But um, still, Free is a massive company with revenue in the billions of dollars, so we're, we're sure that um, it will refocus itself in the future. And so while some kind of big companies are kind of, call it, kind of internally reorganising, there's still kind of more companies still entering the uh, the mobile space. So there's a few this week that we that we spoke to. Um, so I spoke to the um, guys over at Kixai, who are well known for their Facebook games and have, um, fair to say we've been waiting for a while to get their first mobile game. We think it's coming pretty soon, so it's a Backyard Monsters Unleashed, which is a mobile version, completely um, kind of standalone version of one of their popular Facebook games. And it's the first of, um, I think they've got kind of four or five uh, mobile games um, in production. So we're just kind of waiting to, waiting to see if they can have the same impact. Of course, the, the big question from me to them was, um, are you worried that the market's kind of taken off without you and the Clash of Clans, is, which is kind of clearly inspired by Backyard Monsters, has come in, come in and made all this money. But they, uh, I guess as you'd expect them to say perhaps, they say, no, we're not worried about it at all. It's all about quality and we're looking for a core gamer and we think the core gaming market on mobile is underserved. We'll see that game should be out in the next month or so. Other companies are also coming to market. Uh, US companies, again, kind of hardcore strategy company, um, Stardock. So we're looking, their first game came out this week. And in the UK, kind of a similar there are a web, web company, web browser company, Jagex. It's, it's released a few mobile games before, but now it's getting a bit more serious. So, so um, despite the mobile market being what we consider now increasingly mature, there's still these kind of new entries and... and not these aren't startups. These are these are big kind of companies coming in. So um, so kind of interesting time from that point of view. Um, uh, there's been a bit uh, on the I guess what we call it M and A mergers and acquisitions. So um, the small news this week on that front was a uh, French publisher Ubisoft, um, obviously well known for its console side, moving heavily into mobile has been for the last year or so. It bought uh, Future Games of London, which is a, a I guess an indie kind of not really startup that's been around for a couple of years now. Um, terms weren't uh, disclosed, but um, they're a fairly small studio, but have had pretty good success with their with their shark games. Um, so that's a hopefully we, we assume a good deal for both parties concerned. Um, and the big news of the week, which for some reason I don't know why they announced it just about <laughs> two hours ago, um, just as everyone was shutting down, it's the the, uh, the two big Korean companies, so Gamesville and Come to Us, are now uh, coming to be called one company. So. Gameville has bought Come To Us, so they're both um, uh, publicly owned companies, so their shares are available on the stock exchange in Korea, uh, and that has has meant that uh, Gameville has put in a bid to buy all the Come To Us shares. So it's a pretty interesting deal there. They're both um, broadly similarly similar sized companies in terms of their market capitalization. Um, over the last before before smartphone kind of happened, uh, Come To Us was the bigger of the two, and Gameville kind of proved. 
um, I guess kind of like startup spirit and kind of a, even though it was a smaller company by headcount and still is, um, it grew revenue much faster. And then about a year ago, kind of come to us, got a second wind and they were both kind of running neck and neck to be the, the, the biggest company in uh, in Korea in terms of mobile games. Um, at the last kind of 2013, we've seen Gameville kind of like push ahead. The, the Korean market has been kind of uh, disrupted by, by Kakao Talk, which is uh, one of the big social um, mobile messaging systems. Um, and that's it affected both companies really, um, uh, but uh, I guess when when you get to a certain size and and and, and Gameville has been quite bullish in the sense that it, it was raising um, had quite a lot of cash anyway and was raising more money on the stock exchange uh, and it said it was that's for international um, expansion and it was quite um, clear it was going to be buying companies. What we kind of assumed was it would be buying say developers in the US or China. Um, rather than buying its largest um, kind of competitor in the in the Korean market. Now, with all these kind of uh, M and A moves, it's kind of always it's always exciting news when a company buys another company. It always gets a high juices flowing. But in the long term, it's statistically been proven um, buying other companies is often not a good use of the money. Um, and I think in this case, it'll be interesting to see that the, the uh, culture, I, from my viewpoint, is kind of quite different between the two companies. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if kind of Gameville lets come to us run um, kind of as a separate company or does it try and take it over and does it does it try and kind of uh, clear out some headcount, does it kind of shut down some of its games. So that's um, certainly something that we, we'll be looking at over the next six months. Um, and that's the news for this week. Uh, catch you next week.